You know, there's always been this issue that the biggest challenge facing the internet is facing the growth, scaling of the internet. And that's been true 10 years ago, true today, true in the next five years. That every single time we thought we actually understood how big it's going to get, it just got bigger. And whether it's routing, whether it's bandwidth, you know, every single dimension of the internet gets stressed by scale. So the biggest challenge, as always, is how big is it going to get over the next five years and can everything cope? Now, normally it would be sort of the usual kind of topics, a bit of routing, a bit of addressing, you know, whoops, what's that? Addressing. All of a sudden, the next five years sees one thing that wasn't meant to be a problem actually becoming a problem. But all of a sudden, we're running out of what we thought were addresses. The 32-bit number pool, those 4 billion addresses, sometime, probably around two years time from today, we're going to run out of that supply. That doesn't mean you know, turn off your internet, go out and play. The internet will still keep on working. But who is going to, or how are we going to give addresses to the next group of new entrants? You know, my cute little device. What's its address when all of a sudden there are no more addresses to give it? So it's the growth of the network and fueling that with addresses that's actually going to be, I think, one of the biggest challenges. Now, this is not news. This is not something that, oh my God, we just discovered yesterday. You know, we knew we were going to run out of addresses before the internet was even popular. Um, we knew this was going to happen in 1990. And slowly and surely over the next sort of decade, um, we spent a lot of time designing the next IP protocol. Now, it's not much different to the current one. In fact, there's no different except for one thing. It has 128 bits of addresses. Enormous. Two to the power 128, you know. Enough grains of sand to fill up 300 million planets the size of the Earth. So, if we all ran V6, the problem's covered. We won't run out of addresses. But we're running V4, all of a sudden we need to run V6. All of a sudden, hundreds of millions of computers all over the world need to have a little bit of very, very basic surgery. That's not going to happen easily, it's not going to happen readily. The entire network actually needs to shift to the left and you know, make this little hop of transition. We think that it will probably take between five to ten years to actually complete that kind of transition. It's a huge network out there these days. It's not as agile as it used to be. And all of a sudden this transition takes on an alarmingly large dimension. So hang on, we have about two years left of addresses. We have a transition that's going to take between five to ten years. There's a bit of a gap. And that gap is probably the biggest problem that we see over the next few years. How is a deregulated competitive industry actually going to manage to safely bring not only the base of users, but if you will, the stability and security of the environment as we actually try and change the underlying machinery of IP along the way. Now, that's a challenge. Even if this was a regulated industry with monopolies and comfortable margins, that's a challenge. But as a deregulated competitive industry where margins are tight, where investments are made very sparingly and very accurately, precisely how is the industry going to actually manage and fund that transition? That's a challenge. This is actually a time, if you will, of some uncertainty. That it's not just a case of business as usual over the next five years. We've actually got to do something a little bit different. And in a deregulated industry, when all of a sudden you're confronted with these kinds of challenges, the first thing to do is to wonder, hang on a second, is deregulation the right answer? Shouldn't we all of a sudden call in the umpire? Shouldn't we actually get someone else to help us along the way? Isn't this the time when we actually go, it's time to regulate this industry? Deregulation won't get us there. It's possibly the worst move you could do. Because in some ways, Deregulation itself was a courageous move. It said that the customer is important. And once you've made that step and said, right, industry, 
your income comes from customers, focus on it. You've lost control. And now the industry is fixated on a customer. Now, when you say, hang on a second, this challenge in V4, V6 transition goes beyond that. At what point do you have enough courage to say, look, it will be solved in a deregulated mode? I'm not sure industry will do it all by itself, but equally, governments aren't, shouldn't just step in and take over. That is not the way to actually have investor confidence. It's going to pick up. Yeah, I'll wait a bit. It'll pick that up like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Last sentence again. Cheers. So, at some point you've got to say, well, will a deregulated industry actually carry us through this transition or do we call in the regulator to tell us what to do? Certainly I think there's an element of courage inside this decision, but equally I think there's an element of consistency. That if you want to continue to have investor confidence in the internet, if you want to have people seeing the internet as the vehicle for a future economy, then what you actually need to do is to believe that yes, this industry will solve these problems. It will involve, I think, the participation of governments. It will involve regulatory assistance, but it certainly won't involve regulatory intervention. That assistance could simply be in terms of government procurement programs in IPv6, trying to seed a market. It could even be through the use of taxation discounts in IPv6 investments. There are numerous levers that actually governments can pull that don't involve simply walking in and saying, I'm back in control. But underneath all this, if we're going to make this happen without completely upsetting the internet, we're going to have to do this through creative partnerships where industry and the public interest and consumers all need to play their part in actually seeing us through this.